Hi everybody, welcome to TNT. Starting off today at Sawanapum Airport. Just a very quick story. Of course, I've been coming to this airport quite often over the past two years, even in the midst of uh, COVID-19, because I was flying between Bangkok and Phuket every week. And I used to see the parade of Thai Airways jets all parked up, nowhere to go. And in those days there, we used to count about 35 aircraft, which were basically garaged on the tarmac as the robot cleaner comes past. Now, of course, Thai Airways has been saying how good things are. They're back up in the air and everything's back to normal. But even today when I came to the airport, I counted some about 17 aircraft still parked exactly where they were a year ago. Now, I understand some of these might be for sale. We know that Thai Airways is trying to sell some of their planes, but certainly not all of these planes would be for sale. Some of them, I just figure, are still not being used. So I don't think Thai Airways is actually doing as well as they say they are, because the evidence is sitting on the tarmac, just gathering dust. But welcome to TNT today, got plenty to talk about, and thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. And safely back in the studio, back at home, and I'll tell you more about my adventures yesterday, Nothing that exciting to report, but further to my little uh, comment about the Thai Airways fleet, I thought I'd just quickly have a look at Google Maps. Now, if you go to Google Maps, you can uh, find a photo, uh, obviously an overhead photo, and it shows the, uh, the fleets I'm talking about. Now, just to the south of the airport, you can see there's uh, this lot of planes, which I've circled in red, and then to the north, sort of between the airport terminal and the Thai Airways offices, there's this group of Thai Airways planes. And all the planes in those two uh, areas I've denoted in red are all Thai Airways planes, and I've counted some 31. You can see quite clearly, if you zoom in, that they are indeed Thai Airways planes. Now, I'm not exactly sure when the, these Google shots are dated, but it pretty much shows what I saw yesterday. And these planes have been sitting there certainly less than around about a year ago, but still, as I counted there, 31 planes still sitting idle. So I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, whether all these planes are up for sale or some of them simply aren't being used. But let's move on to uh, other stories today. And we can't really start today without talking about Charlene. And uh, this is the story about Charlene and the Taiwanese actress. And she jumped onto her Instagram page yesterday and she was thanking the BBC, Taiwanese media and some Thais after Thai police capitulated and admitted seven of their officers were involved in extorting her on January the 4th. And she said, grateful for the many Thai friendships made. You've taught me that many friendship knows no language barriers. Thailand, your culture, people, food will always be special to me. I look forward to a better experience in my future. Just wonder if she's going to be coming back anytime soon. How welcome would she be? Earlier on the same day, seven police officers from the checkpoint were transferred to an inactive post and will possibly face criminal charges for extorting money, and the chief of the police station was earlier transferred on Monday. So that information there from CalSod English. There's a bit more to read on that as we try and sort of find out the little pearls of truth in amongst all this mess. And The Nation goes on to report that the actress, who debuted in the film Perfect Girl, dropped a bombshell with her social media post, which we just read, and which she accused Thai police of planting a vaping device on her and demanding 27,000 baht in exchange for her freedom. And then earlier, the panel had found grounds to believe the seven policemen had found the vaping device on the actress, but chose not to confiscate the item or arrest her and take legal action. And it also says that the import and sale of e-cigarettes is banned in Thailand and the possession of such devices is unlawful. Though Thai police do not normally go after users of e-cigarette devices, they are required by law not to turn a blind eye once they spot anyone having a vaping device in their possession. Well, I don't know about you, but I know so many friends who do use these vaping devices. Some use them as a way to get off uh, uh, tobacco cigarettes. 
Uh, other people, I think they just uh, need something to do with their hands. I don't find them particularly pleasant to be sitting around. They've got all sorts of different smells and odours that uh, come out of those devices. And I suppose that's one of the appeals that you can uh, select your favourite flavour. But uh, I was in, in working in a workplace. Oh, hi, Dina. She's around again. But I was working in a workplace where a lot of people used to walk around with these vaping devices and uh, use them quite publicly when outside the office. So I think that there is a, a, a level of acceptance of these vaping devices and that the laws perhaps aren't abundantly clear. Although maybe after this particular incident, they're a little bit more clear to some people. Let's move on to our next story now. And Thailand's corruption standing for 2022 and improvement over 2021. Does this mean Thailand's more corrupt or less corrupt? The story is being reported by Thai PBS World. And Thailand's corruption standing for 2022 improved nine places to 101st from 110th out of 180 countries. So we're sort of uh, at the lower end of uh, the corruption index. And that's according to the 2022 Corruption Perception Index by Transparency International. And Thailand is fourth amongst ASEAN countries. And the Secretary General of the National Anti-Corruption Commission said that Thailand scored 36 points compared to 35 the year before. And the world's top performer was Denmark, which scored 90 points, followed by Finland and New Zealand. With top performer amongst Asian countries was Singapore. The Secretary General said that from foreign investors' perception, the Thai government has become more serious in dealing with the problem of bribery and has taken punitive action against corrupt officials. Well, there's no doubt there's certainly been a lot more uh, in the media about this particular issue. And I think the Thai government is sincere in trying to track down and cut down the amount of corruption in Thailand. But it won't happen overnight. This is a generational situation. It's quite uh, endemic in the whole system. So I don't think it's going to go away immediately. But I certainly do think there is an intention to try and root out some of the more serious corruption. And the government's also reformed the system for approving projects by cutting bureaucratic red tape, reducing the discretion available to officials. And uh, from the actual story, the original story by transparency.org, New Zealand, Singapore and Hong Kong and Australia lead the region. Afghanistan, Cambodia, Myanmar and North Korea are the lowest in the region. And the significant improvers are South Korea, Vietnam and the Maldives. And the three countries that declined over this time, Malaysia, Mongolia and Pakistan. And that reported by Transparency.org. Thailand, just a little bit less corrupt than it was 12 months before. Big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. If you're heading out to the islands around Phuket, make sure you contact them before you do, uh, before you make a booking and check out their services. There's a link in the description in this video. So yesterday, up in Pattaya, as a guest of a visa agent, just seeing how things operated. And let me tell you that the, uh, the Chombri office in Jomtiem in Pattaya was packed to the gunnels. It was so, so busy. Now, I've been down to the Phuket immigration a few times, of course, over the years. But this was a whole different level of packed. There were probably 100 people waiting outside, waiting to get in. There's shade for them to stand in. But uh, that's just outside. And this was around about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, once I got inside, though, it was complete mayhem. But obviously, uh, everybody knows what they're doing in there. But wow, it was particularly busy. And the visa agent also telling me what other visa agents have been sharing with me over the past month, that there is just a huge influx of new uh, visa applications at the moment and the immigration officers around the country are struggling to get through them uh, such that uh, I reported last week that in Phuket they're refusing to process any new visa applications by Chinese citizens. So uh, there is an ongoing impact with uh, this new influx 
of uh, particular countries into Thailand, and the immigration officers are certainly struggling to cope with them. I think in some ways they've sort of been caught with their pants down, and they're just not ready for uh, so many new applications. Let's move on to our next story now, and more than 200,000 tourists visit Samui Island in the first month of 2023, and looks like Samui had a great start to the year, as did Phuket, and the Suratani governor told the media that between January the 1st to the 23rd, there were 178,000 tourists visiting Koh Samui, 87,500 arrived by planes, 91,000 arrived by ferry. Interesting to see that more people arrived by ferry to Samui than, uh, than by air. And he said the number of tourists who are visiting Samui in the first month of the year has increased when compared with the years before we did. Certainly hope so. They're also visiting Kopangan and Kot Tao, also known as, I'm not going to say it myself, and this is a good start, he says, which shows that Samui is one of the top places in Thailand that tourists like to visit. So good start for Koh Samui for the start of the year. Not quite so good news up in Pattaya, where we've got a floating cafe and a restaurant sinking in Pattaya Bay. This happened on Monday. No casualties. That looks like a bit of fun, doesn't it? Uh, sort of a pirate ship, but uh, apparently it sank on Monday. Let's find out some more details. It says the floating cafe and restaurant sank in rough seas in Patia Bay, but there were no casualties or deaths. Eyewitnesses on the beach near the Bali High Pier say they saw the floating restaurant, which was about a kilometre from the beach, slowly sink into the water. The floating cafe and restaurant modelled after a pirate ship suspended operations on Monday due to bad weather. It offers drinks, seafood, live band and squid fishing services. Then down the bottom, the owner has been ordered to see marine officials in Patia and produce all the documents from the floating cafe and the restaurant for examination. Obviously, just checking whether it's been an insurance job or whether somebody forgot to put the plug in. Now, let's go to our next story uh, from the Bangkok Post. Per Thai pressed on the Royal Insult Law. Now, this is Article 112 of the Criminal Code in Thailand. It's also known as the Les Majeste Law, where you're not allowed to insult the royal family, the institution, the monarch, or members of the royal family. Political activists on Tuesday pressed the Per Thai Party to pledge that if it wins the coming election, it would repeal the law on royal defamation. Per Thai is the leading opposition party and seen as the party that will probably get the highest number of primary votes in the forthcoming general election. The meeting was inconclusive, but it comes at a time when three people detained under Section 112 of the Criminal Code, the Les Majeste Law, are staging hunger strikes with two of them in hospital in serious condition. Then under Section 112, anyone can file a complaint of Les Majeste and the police are obligated to investigate it. Punishments are up to 15 years in prison for each perceived royal insult. Over the past two years, 228 people have been charged under Les Majeste and 10 are currently in detention, according to the Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, which has represented many of those accused for royal insult. And the opposition Move Forward Party supports amending the law with shorter sentences and a provision that only the palace be allowed to file criminal complaints. Now, the Move Forward Party is the only registered political party in Thailand that's calling for a change in the Les Majeste laws. Which is interesting. And Per Thai, also currently in opposition, is now being sort of pushed to support the move forward uh, opposition to Section 112. I just don't see that happening for, again, purely political purposes, because it may be that Per Thai may need the support of Palang Pracharat, a very conservative party and currently the ruling party in the coalition. They may need to uh, form their own coalition to form a government. And also Taxon himself, Taxon Shinawat, has said that it's not Section 112 that's the problem, it's just the way that it's been interpreted. So uh, it looks like Move Forward still remain the, the outliers 
calling for amendments to this section 112. And back to the story, uh, Tantawan, who's 20, and Orowan, who's 23, have been refusing food, water, and most medical interventions since January the 18th and are in critical condition at the Tamasat University Hospital. And there's another young person there, Siti Chok, who's in the 15th day of a hunger strike at the Bangkok Remand Prison and gone without water for the past six days. So those three young people certainly suffering to try and bring attention to Article 112 in Thailand. So it's Wednesday on TNT, first day of the month, and we go to our next story, well-known fitness YouTuber Leo Rex, also known as Leo and Longevity, found dead in a Pattaya home, and this reported by the PattayaNews.com. And according to police, they responded to a call by other occupants of a home in the Pattaya Lagoon village. And uh, that happened on January the 30th, Monday. Upon arrival at the residence, police found a 34-year-old American citizen, Laith Abdullah Al-Ghaz, also known as Leo Rex Online, deceased in a bedroom with a private bathroom. Embassy and family members have been contacted. And uh, the room appeared to have been messy and possibly ransacked. And items were scattered across the bedroom and bathroom. Blood was found on the floor of the bedroom as well, and Mr. Algaz had been a regular YouTube contributor focused on fitness and health. He had 123,000 followers as of press time, which is a hell of a lot more than me, but sad to hear there about Mr. Algaz. Obviously, he had uh, quite a community of followers, and we'll bring you some more details if they do come to hand. And uh, we go to our next story now. And this published by ASEAN Urbanist, countries with the highest motorbike usage. Probably no surprises here, but uh, indeed, Thailand is the country with the highest motorbike usage. So if you read down the side, they're households that own a motorbike, a percentage. So 87% of Thai homes have a motorbike. We've got two here. And that's followed by Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and then it's quite a drop down to China, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, and then very surprisingly, you've got the Philippines there with only 32% of Philippine homes have a motorbike. Now, I found that particularly surprising. I thought it might be a much higher percentage, but uh, interesting there on that graph that 87% of Thailand's homes do own a motorbike. And uh, Thailand, the leading country with the highest motorbike usage. We go to our next story now, and this reported by BNN Bloomberg. And Thailand hands out 95 million condoms to beat syphilis and teen pregnancy. And Thailand's planning to distribute the condoms as the Southeast Asian nation seeks to promote safer sex ahead of Valentine's Day. Uh, Universal healthcare card holders are eligible to receive. 10 condoms a week for one year. Someone's going to be very busy. And uh, the condoms will be available in four sizes. Don't, just don't. And they can be grabbed from pharmacies and uh, primary care units of hospitals nationwide. Then down the bottom, Thailand has seen an increase in sexually transmitted diseases in recent years with syphilis and gonorrhea making up more than half of the 2021 cases. According to the latest data, the age group most affected were those between 15 and 19 and 20 to 24 years. Well, that's hardly surprising. In 2021, 24.4 Thai girls in the age group of 15 to 19 gave birth out of every 1,000. And this compares with a global rate of 42.5 for the same age group. So Thailand, about half the international average. And down the bottom there, about 50 million out of nearly 70 million Thais are enrolled in the government's universal healthcare scheme, also known as the gold card. And with that, thanks for joining me to catch up with the main stories around Thailand. Don't forget on the weekends, Nick joins me on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m., our live programs where you get to join in and comment about anything, complain about anything, ask a few questions. Always a very interesting time and we hope to improve those weekend programs, even trying to add talkback when we can figure out 
what wires to plug into which black boxes. But big thanks to Five Star Marine, our sponsors, especially a big thanks to you, and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.